Hello, my name is Nelson, and this tutorial is going to show you how to add a welcome screen to an Android game app that you are developing. This tutorial comes in four videos, four parts. It's not that hard to do, but there's a little bit to explain, but it's quite easy once you know what you're doing. Uh, the game I'm going to modify is the game you see on your screen right now. It's a game I found on YouTube, as you can see. It's made by a company called If4 Java, which is on your lower left-hand corner, and the game is called Kill Them All. If you guys came from my last two videos, you know the uh, evolution of how I, I got to where I'm at now. If you haven't seen any of my tutorial, then a quick explanation. I found this tutorial online on YouTube, uh, like everyone else. I There's eight videos. I did all the videos. The demo showed that it had sound effects, but they never showed us how to put sound effects in the game. So my first video, I learned how to put sound effects, and I produced the video. My second video, someone asked in that video, do I know how to put background music? So my second video shows everyone how to put background music to the game. And now I'm here because someone said, hey, can you put a welcome screen to the game with just, you know, screen with two buttons? And I said, sure, I can do it. It took a little time. I was a little busy and preoccupied, but this is what I created. And it's basically a welcome screen to this game here called Kill Them All by F4 Java. Now, what do I mean by a welcome screen? Well, lack of a better word. What we have now is there's a, um, you could click the icon on your desktop and the game launches. What the individual suggested I do and what I call a welcome screen is a screen that shows up in between. So when you click the icon, it goes to the screen, not the game. And it has two button launch game or exit. And I put the title kill them on on it. And that's what they wanted. Now for future endeavors, why I left this center part so open is what I'm thinking about doing is make videos that show people how to. Add some of these functionality, like how to turn off and on the music of your game, your background music, or turn on and off your sound effects, or even different versions of the game. Here, I got an angry baseball version. And, of course, the two buttons that launch the game and exit. So it becomes a welcome slash setup page. But right now, we're just going to worry about the welcome part. And, we're again, this is all we're going to do. The title and two buttons, launch the game or exit. Now that we know what we're doing, let's go ahead and get started modifying the program. Let's go ahead and click Eclipse, launch it. Again, here we're back at the beginning of Eclipse. If you go to the left-hand side to the Project Explorer era, go ahead and click on the file name as Kill Them All Dash Training. It's right here. You expand that that folder. You go down to the SRC folder package, expand that. You'll find a package in there. Expand the package, and you'll see all the files that makes the game, the Java files. What we're gonna do is create a whole new Java file. You'll do that by clicking on the package, right-clicking on it, and say New Others. And a wizard opens up, and then you're going to go ahead where it says create an Android activity. You go down to the Android section and click Android activity. That will create a page for you, a Java page, among other things. Go ahead, next. And we're going to set the default on this one, a blank activity. And we hit next. And now we're going to come where we could name the activities. Right now, I'm, I'm going to call mine's welcome. Uh, let's say page. I don't like page, I like screen. It's more, to me, it sounds right. You can use page if you want. The activity in the begin, uh, beginning of the second one, layout name, I like to get rid of the activity underscore. I don't know why, I just don't like to see it. The title, it's defaulted to welcome screen. And what's more important here is this launcher activity. You want to click that box. And what this does is allow this page to be launched first before the game. The other page will be called from other pages. But if you want a page to be launched first, you have to have a launcher activity box check. Next down here in the box, you hit next if you want or hit finish. I'll hit next. And really it's just previews of what the files are going to be created and changed. And, and then the only option is hit next. So just had to hit next. Uh, you don't pretty much worry about that. Now if you look at the left hand side, you notice that the file was created right here in your package like you thought. Welcome screen.java. But if you look down, you notice that the RSC folders have expanded, the layout folder has expanded, and there's a whole new file in there called welcome screen.xml. And that's what's open in your work area over here. It's a screen, it's baby, it's basically a graphical layout user interface where it's a click and drag procedure that you can go ahead and create the physical appearance of the page. The inside of the work area, that's the page. If you go over here to the left-hand side, you notice that the widget box, the form widgets has been expanded. And any of these items here, you can click and drag it onto the page and it will be added for you. And so that's why this is easier. This is the way we're going to do it. Some people call it cheating, but you know, it's, it's the quickest way to do it and not waste too much time. But if you look down at the bottom of this column where the, the form widgets are at, at the bottom you notice the tab that says graphical layout. That's what's showing on the screen right now, a black screen that says hello world. If you want to see the code behind it, right next to it is a tab that says welcome screen.xml. Click on that. 
And this is all the code that's causing that screen to display. It's very little code to produce a big page like that, to tell you the truth. And if you notice, this is the layout part, and this is the text view part. Uh, if you read some of these, you could kind of figure out what they're for. If you look at the text view, it says, you know, layout height. So the text height is wrap content and then the layout width. And then it says text. And then it says it has a string. It says string backslash hello world. That means the text in there is controlled by a string. They created a string. Now, basically, this is all if you want to, this is not going to be an XML you know teaching you XML if you want to learn about that there's a bunch of books out there to teach it the public library has a bunch of books you can use those check it out for free uh, but it will take a little long it's not an XML tutorial so we're gonna change we're gonna refer back to this page once in a while to see the changes but mostly we're gonna work off the graphical layout so go back down to the lower tab click the graphical layout tab get back to this graphical layout area now look at the work area we have the you can click the body or the text. If you click on the text, you notice that the familiar resizing box has occurred. Well, when you look at that, you notice that uh, if you look on the right hand side, you notice there's a box called properties, and then there have little boxes. All these properties is what is controlling that text, the size, the color. So this refers to that box. If you go back to your work area and you click on the body, you notice that the, the the words are no longer selected. You go back to the property boxes. You notice they change. They don't have text anymore, but they do have something called background. These all these properties are boxes are to control the body of your item, your work area that's in your welcome screen. Now, if you go back to your work area, let's click on the text because we're going to change that first. Now, if you notice, you got the familiar resizing boxes. You go back to the property boxes, and the text boxes change. What we're going to do is change that so we can reflect what we want on there. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the color from white to red. So if you look down, there's one, two, three, four, five. The fifth one says tech color. And that makes sense. That's the text. You're going to click on there. Now, I know by experience that you can use a string or plain text. If you use a plain text, you'll get a warning. Others, it will accept it perfectly. I know text color will accept plain text perfectly. And I know this scheme, color scheme it uses. There's many different times. There's one called hexadecimal. That's the one that just accept. And when hexadecimal is always the first, the first thing you have to put a pound sign. All of them have pound sign. And then it's six digits or six characters. They're either letters, numbers, or a combination of both. And I know if I want to turn it to red, it's two lowercase f's and four zeros one two three four and if you hit enter you notice a small box has opened up it shows you that yeah you select this color and if you look at the work area you notice the hello world is now red so that worked and there's no warning if there was a problem like if you if they wanted you to put a string you'll see a little warning sign in there and I'll show you that in a little bit but that it was still accept it. it's just saying we rather you use string instead of text but it'll work perfect that's why it says warning and not a red error so now that we do that we say well we want it bigger because it is small so let's change the the size if you go two boxes down you see text size the box next to it obviously is where you need to change the the uh the text and i know what size i like is 23 but you can experiment what you like i'm gonna put two three and then the hint hint box shows up and it gives you two different hints I know in the text area, it, they like you to use SP. But if you click on the DP, and let's click it at first. You see it's accepted, and it's, everything's fine. If you look in the work area, you, know that you notice underneath the Hello World, there's a, a warning sign on there. If you hover all over it, down at the bottom, you'll see that it's a warning. It'll tell you at the end, it said, uh, should use SP instead of DP for text sizes. So it, it'll work, but it's just saying you rather we rather you use uh, SP. So if you go back to the property boxes and sh change the whole thing to 23 and then you select SP this time and then you look over to the work area, you notice that the yellow the yellow caution sign is gone. It accepted. It is happy. We'll do it the right way. But now if you want to see exactly how the code looks at this point, go ahead and click on the tab in the welcome screen.xml tab. If you notice here in the text view, that's what's changing. There's the color that we typed in and here's the size and you notice there's not an error if you wanted to change this you could do it by hand right here okay now that we see it's there let's go back to the boxes as you can see that worked fine I'll show you about error later uh, well let's go back now that it's looking saying hello world we don't want the word hello world we want to kill them all so go up to the third box on the top you see text let's change the text we're gonna change the text here by hand now you notice it has a string in there 
if I click off, it says at string backslash hello world. Because they're saying they read, prefer you use a string, but this just use regular text. Kill them all. Hit enter. If you look back, you notice that the error is there. If you go back, let's go down to look at the uh, w, the uh, welcome screen.xml file. As you notice, the error is here too, and it's showing you that it work, but it's a warning. They don't like it. Now go back to the graphical view. So let's do it their way. What we're going to do is go back to the property boxes of the text of kill them all. All right, for a quick sidebar, we're going to uh, take a look on this, uh, the property boxes real quick. If you notice, these eight top boxes got these bold prints. These are just commonly used boxes that they put on top so you can easily find them. If you notice down here, you'll see that the text is in the text box and the text box reappears down here as well. Now this is like the basics where everything's at. But just here, is, these up here are just the top ones that you can quickly find them and use them. You can change them instead of going all through this. Now if you notice there's a lot of other boxes in here, you can go ahead and uh, just practice. Here's a hint box. Here's a typeface. You can learn what they do and learn what you can do with them. But we're just going to do the basics for our tutorial. And so we're going to get back up here and highlight this and hit delete. And you notice at the end of this box where you type, there's a small box with three dots in there. That's where you can help you create a string. Click on it twice, one to select it, one to launch the box it needs, which is called Resource Chooser. And if you notice, these are all the strings that are in your system right now. Here's the hello world that they used before. We're going to create a new string. So if you go below this large box, you hit that button that says new string. You click on it. You see that the first box says string. That's where you put the value. We're going to put kill them all. Oh, my goodness, my fingers are too big for the small keyboard. And now we're going to, we know what the value is. Now we're going to, what are you going to name this? We're going to call this title underscore and all our case kill them all and that's it so we're so now your the value is kill them all and then this is what we're going to call it we're going to go to the bottom of this box click okay when the resource chooser comes up you're going to notice that in the last item here it's called kill them all that string has been created you click on it and you click okay and now when you look at the worker you see that the um Letters, kill them all, has been claimed. There's no warning sign, so it's working fine. And that's how you do that. It's very simple. Now, if you want to align it, because it's over to the left, all you got to do is click on the, the letters and then start sliding it over. It's a click and drag system. If you notice now, you notice that there's an arrow that points up, meaning it's, it's going to align to the top. But you also know there's a dotted line in the bottom, and it's saying it's this is the center. If you want this, it's like alignment assist lines or reference lines. You can let it go there, and it's going to say, see, its reference is near the top and it's in the center. Now this is kind of low to us. So I'm going to click on it, drag it up a little high. I'm going to get it real up here and see what it looks like. That's good. Now it's saying the arrow saying, hey, you're centered and you're, and it's centered on the page and it's aligned to the top. So I'll click on the body, get rid of all the lines. As you see, that looks pretty good. Of course, in our mock-up, this page was, is not black, it's white. So let's see if we can change the color. Make sure you click on the body, go back to the property pages. As you see, the third box down, it says background. So we're going to click on that. Now, I already know this is going to take uh, plain text, and you don't have to create a string. So I use, and it's take the decimal scheme. So you hit the pound sign, and then you, there's always a pound sign, numbers, a combination. Each, I know white is all lowercase f. So one, two, three, four, five, six lowercase f's. You hit enter. As you see, the familiar box showed up. It's white. It's telling you there, that's the color you selected. That's what this code is. You look at the work area, and as you see, it's white. And there it is. And so now you centered it, you changed the size, it's near the top, and you changed the background color to color. You didn't take one piece of code. So now, if you want to look at the code, you click on the code, welcome screen XML. And as you can see, all this code is what was uh, created. It's aligned to the top, horizontal, center equals true. Here's the string text, the color of the text, and here's your text size. I'm gonna click back on the graphical layout. I think that's it for now. We're going to end this, and I'll see you on part two and completing this page. Thank you for listening.